ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಕ್ಲೌಡ್ಸ್ಗೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ನನ್ನ ಹೆಸರು ನಿಮಿಲ ಸೊ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಪಿ ಯು ಸಿ ಬಯಾಲಜಿನ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಆದಂಥ ಎವಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ನ ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸನ್ನು ನೋಡ್ತಾ ಹೋಗೋಣ ಸೊ ಫಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಇಯರ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಲ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಹೂ ಪ್ರಪೋಸ್ ದ ಬಿಗ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ ಥಿಯರಿ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ವೆರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಯಾಂಡೆಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೋಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅನ್ ಪ್ರೀ ಮಾಡಲ್ ಆರ್ ಅ ಹಾಟ್ ಸಬ್ಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಟು ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಒಪ್ಯಾರನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಾಲ್ಡೇನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಕೆಮಿಕಲ್ ಎವಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಪ್ರಿಸೀಡೆಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಎವಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಅಂತ ಸೊ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯೂಲ್ಸ್ ಒರಿಜಿನೇಟೆಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಇನ್ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಪ್ರಿಕಾಸ ವಾಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಕಾಸ್ ದ ಎವಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಟೂ ವಾಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಸ್ಟೆನ್ಲಿ ಮೆಲ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯುರೆ ಸಿಂಥಸಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಯೋ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯೂಲ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಪ್ರಿಮಿಟಿವ್ ಅಟ್ಮಾಸ್ಫಿಯರ್ಸ್ on a laboratory scale they proved this by experimentally and amino acids were synthesized from ammonia oxygen and carbon dioxide inside specialized apparatus now this is how that stanley uh, and his colleagues experimentally showed now primitive atmosphere had high temperature volcanic storms and reducing atmosphere containing ch4 nh3 and h2 etc and ure and miller took the same compounds in a closed flask along with water vapors at 800 degrees centigrade and then created an electric discharge and formation of biomolecules like amino acids simple sugars and fats etc was observed in this flask then theories of evolution the theory of special creation or divine intervention was challenged by charles darwin so he made observations on his sea trip around the world abroad hms now it was concluded that all existing living forms share similarities among themselves and also with the life forms other life forms and which was existing millions of years ago and now they were extinct many were extinct and evolution of life forms has been gradual and those life forms better fit in the environments which will live more progeny and this is called natural selection and it is a mechanism of evolution and alfred wallace working on the malay archipelago sorry archipelago also came to the same conclusion now evidences of evolution so there were fossils which represented plants and animals which lived millions of years ago and are now extinct but different age rocks sediments contain fossils of different life forms which probably died during the formation of this particular sediment now comparative anatomy and morphology so this is going to show evidences of the similarities and differences between living forms of today and that of the prehistoric times and then some of the examples of comparative anatomy and morphology were homologous organs wherein all mammals will share pattern of four limbs but though they perform different functions they are anatomically similar and they look similar but they have different functions to perform and this is called divergent evolution and structures are called the homologous structure which is the common ancestors now analogous organs so the pair of organs which are not anatomically similar to look alike but they perform same function example wings of butterflies and birds this is called convergent evolution now adaptive melanism so in england it was noted that before industrial revolution number of whitening moths white winged moths were more than that of dark melanized moths however after industrialization there were more dark melanized moths and the explanation was that after industrialization the three tree trunks became darker with deposits of soot and smoke and therefore the number of dark moths increased in order to protect themselves from the predators while white winged ones were easily picked up by the predators so when it was white on a black branch it was easily picked up but in when it was black on a black branch it was not so visible and similarly the herbicide and pesticide resistant plants and animals and antibiotic resistant bacteria are also some of the evidences which will prove evolution now adaptive radiation so during this exploration the galapagos islands and darwin noticed that there were many variants of finches in the same island and they varied from normal seed eating varieties to those or that of insects so this process of evolution started from single point and radiating in different directions called adaptive radiations 
and other examples for this evolution is the Australian marsupia for single ancestor. So placental mammals will also exhibit similarities with their corresponding marsupial. Now example placental wolf and the transmian wolf when more than one adaptive radiation occurs in an isolated geographical area and this phenomenon is called the convergent evolution phenomenon. So this is the marsupial radiation. So transmanian wolf, this is tiger cat and banded anterior, marsupial rat, kangaroo, wobat and bandicoot, koala, marsupial mole and sugar glider. Now biological evolution and mechanisms. Now according to Darwin, evolution took place by natural selection wherein naturally it was happening. A number of life plants, uh, sorry, life forms will depend on their ability to multiply and their lifespan to survive. Another aspect for natural sele uh, selection is the nature of the fittest, so survival of the fittest, wherein nature will select the individuals which are most fit to adapt to the environment. And branching descent and natural selection are two important concepts of Darwin's theory of evolution wherein French naturalist Landmark observed that evolution will occur due to the use and disuse of particular organs or the body parts. And for example, giraffe have developed long necks as a result of attempts to eat leaves high upon the trees. Now Darwin also observed that variations are inheritable, that is the species will fit to survive the most, leaves more offsprings and hence the population's characteristics will change giving rise to the evolution of new life forms. Now mechanism, so Darwin did not quite explain how evolution gave rise to different species of same organism but he Mendel also mentioned about inheritable factors which influence the phenotype of an organism. Now next was Hugo de Vries who based on his work of evening primrose suggested that variations occur due to mutations. Now mutations are random and directionless while the variations that Darwin talked about were small and directional and Hugo Drevis gave the name saltation wherein single step large mutation to the mutations which brought about speciation. And then hardy Winberg's principle. So the frequency of the occurrence of alleles of a gene in the population will remain constant through generations until any of the disturbances like mutation or non-random mating etc are introduced. And genetic equilibrium which was gene pool remained constant and it is a state which provides the baseline to measure genetic change and some total of the allelic frequencies is 1. And individual frequencies are represented as a P and Q as in a diploid where P and Q will represent the frequency of allele A and small a. And the frequency of capital A is P, P square and small a is Q square and that of A and small a is 2 P Q respectively. Hence P square plus 2 P Q plus Q square is 1 which is expansion of P plus Q whole square and when the frequency measured is different from the expected ones it is indicative of an evolutionary change. hardy Winberg equilibrium was affected by gene flow and gene migration. So now genetic drift changes which are occurring by chance, mutations and genetic recombination, natural selection were also the factors which affected and sometimes change in allele frequency is so prominent that new specific of species, I mean new sample of the population which can become a different species at original different population will become the founder and this effect is called the founder effect. Now the advantageous mutations which help in natural selection over the generations will give rise to new phenotypes and this is going to result in speciation. Now evolution of plants and animal evolutions, okay, animal evolutions of plants. Now cellular life forms occurred on earth about 200 mil 2000 million years ago and some of these cells had ability to produce oxygen through reactions which were very similar to photosynthesis and slowly these single celled became multicellular. Now, seaweeds and some plants probably existed 320 million years ago. So this is how it has happened. So this is the chlorophyte ancestor and tracheophyte ancestor, rene type ancestor and plesiophyton ancestors. Now evolution of animals. So animals evolved 500 million years ago and the first one of them was the invertebrates. 
and jawless fishes evolved 350 million years ago and some of the fishes could go on land and then they came back to water wherein these became the first amphibians. In 1938 a fish cloaxanth which was thought to be extinct was caught in South Africa and this variety of fish was called the lobe fins and it is believed that it would have evolved the first amphibian. And amphibians evolved into reptiles and in next 200 million years reptiles of different dom uh, sizes dominated the earth. However, about 65 million years ago some of them like the dinosaurs disappeared. And first among the mammals were small shrew like mammals. During continental drift when North America joined South America primitive mammals suffered but pouched mammals of Australia survived in the same drift because of the lack of competition from the other. So this is how the survival of these species happen. And then 15 million years ago it was a Dryopithecus which was ape like man and Ramapithecus which was man like appeared and hairy and they walked similar to the chimpanzees. And 3 to 4 million years ago it was man like primates and they were not tall but they walked straight. 2 million years ago it was the Australopithecus which is also called the Homo habilis which lived in East Africa and they used stone weapons and ate fruits human like with brain capacity of 650 to 800 cc but they were not so matured. Now 1.5 million years ago was where the Homo erectus took place where brain capacity was around 900 cc and they were meat eaters and 1000 to 40,000 years ago it was the Neanderthal man where brain capacity developed to 1400 cc and they used heads. Now 75,000 to 10,000 years recently we homo sapiens evolved. Now when we compare the skulls of an adult human being baby chimpanzees and adult chimpanzees we observe that skull of baby chimpanzee will resemble the human brain and it was compared to the adult chimpanzees. So this is how it is. So this is the baby chimpanzees skull which resembles more of a human than of the adult chimpanzees. Thank you.